down. Yes. Yes, there we go. And it keeps saying pause due to back neck. Went on tonight. Okay, I'm back. Can y'all hear me? Hit me up in the chat if y'all can hear and see me because everything was paused and it said I was not live. It said it was paused. Can y'all hear me? We good? Let me know in the chat if y'all can hear me, if y'all can see me, if it's all good. I see hearts. Okay, there we go. Listen, the devil is a lie. It's 2021. We're not doing this tonight. Y'all know I am usually got a clear connection. Dr. Jess, I see you. I'm going to let you in in just a second, but... You might have to request again, but all I'm saying is we're not doing this 2021. We left all that mess in 2020. We will not have the spirit of Teddy Riley again, okay? Teddy was last year, and I love me some Teddy Riley, but not today. But anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome to Wise Wind Down. Yay! I'm so excited. Happy 2021. I'm so glad to see you all virtually somewhat. Um, but welcome to Wise Wind Down. If this is your first time, welcome to this wonderful, beautiful experience. If you are back, if you're one of my regulars, I appreciate y'all. Shout out to you. I'm so glad that you're here. Thanks for rocking with me during the first season. And I'm so excited for 2021. And this is the brand new season, kicking it off. And I'm so excited. I am your host, Shonda White. And I've been married for 12 years now. And when I got married, I remember, you know, um, I knew a lot about dating and stuff and how to be single and all that stuff and wrote books about it. But then I was like, well, now that I'm married, like, what does that mean? Like, what am I supposed to do? Or things would happen in my marriage. I'm like, why isn't anybody talking about like marriage and like being in love and like how to stay married and stuff? And so I wanted to create this outlet and I created it during quarantine because I wanted to have just a safe, fun place where we could be empowered, have fun and just feel like, you know what, if, if they can make it through their marriage, I can make it through it. And whatever works for your marriage works for you. And so I just wanted to encourage that and create that space for all of us. So whether you're single, whether you aspire to be married, whether you're engaged or you've been married for five months or maybe five years, 20 years, it doesn't matter. This is the safe space for you all and we're pulling back the curtain on marriage and we're keeping it 100 and being transparent about what it takes not only to get married but what does it take to stay married okay because anybody can walk down that aisle but it takes a lot to really stay married okay that's the word for you but as always you can catch the replay um as soon as the live is over but we have so much fun doing the live show and i love interacting with you all so make sure you interact if you have questions let me know shoot them through and of course um you can catch the replay on my IGTV. And uh, just a heads up, as I mentioned before, the schedule is changing this year, but that's okay. So instead of every week, we're going to be going bi-weekly, so every other week. And you're still going to get the wonderful quality guests, and it's still going to be a fun, engaging experience. So without further ado, let me welcome our special guest tonight, because I'm so excited. excited. Happy New Year, y'all. Oh, I see y'all in the comments. Happy New Year. Yes, happy new year to y'all too. Hey. <laughs> Wait, I want to do that again. I want to get my feathers in. <laughs> yes, feathers. We we welcome all of it. Yes. One more time. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Hey, I gotta bring it in close. <laughs> Listen, I need you to do this all night. You just kind of yes. like put it in the frame, like intentionally bring it over. Yep. It's like when you get engaged and you're like, hey, everybody. Oh, yes. You got to be extra with the ring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Welcome, Dr. Jess. Yes. You look Thank lovely you as me. always. How um, are you? I'm pretty good. I'm glad it's 2021. I'm glad it's 2021. And I'm oh, glad to be here with you. I'm glad that you invited me on. I think it's so dope what you're doing and having this type of conversation, which is new for me. So I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, yes. Listen, I was nervous all day. I was like, okay, Sean, you got to bring it. This is Dr. Jess. Ain't no games. But, you know, thankfully, I'm so glad that we were able to meet virtually earlier last year with Exxon and Cohen and stuff. And honestly, you having that conversation with you really inspired me. And a few months later, Wise Wind Down was born. So I kind of have you to thank for that because I just loved talking to you and getting to know you. And I was like, I enjoyed this. So I'm so excited. <laughs> Me too. That's amazing. You are awesome. So I'm I'm oh. loving this. And I don't, like I said, no one is doing this. No one is having this type of conversation. So I'm, I'm well, excited. I appreciate it. So before we get into it and Kiki, we're going to have a little fun um, and, you know, keep it real and just talk about some great and honest things. But I want to introduce the people to you or introduce you to the people, as I should say. 
So um, let me see. Dr. Jessica Clemens, MD. Okay, doctor, board certified <laughs> psychiatrist, has recently been recognized by Forbes as a leader in making mental health and wellness a part of the current zeitgeist. While her work is primarily in providing direct clinical care, her mission is to reduce stigma associated with mental illness, particularly in the Black community. Her efforts consist of using social media and community discussions to educate her following, which led her to be selected to provide the first live televised therapy session on VH1 in session live with Dr. Jess, along with recognition from medical societies, mental health and government organizations, and most importantly, the community in which she serves. So everyone clap it up in the chat for Dr. Jess. Woo! Yeah. Thank you yes. so much. <laughs> so before we get started, listen, I know you have a fairly new baby, but you had your baby during quarantine, which we'll get into that later. And you are constantly pouring into others with all the work mm -hmm. that you're doing. But I wanted to first ask, how are you sincerely doing like right now today? How are you doing? How are you feeling? Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Um, I always got to check in. Um, I'm doing okay today. You know, I know obviously there's so much going on in our capital. So that's like what is happening. I'm thinking about folks in DC. I hope they are staying safe. Um, I'm doing okay. I'm I'm ready to get back to life as we previously knew it, if we ever really can. Um, Cause it is, it's getting tough to be like inside and not get to socialize. Cause I'm really serious about like keeping social, social distance. So I miss seeing my family yes. and friends. So it's been hard. It has been hard. But in this moment, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. okay. <laughs> and I think that's honest. And it's like all of us are just taking it day by day. Like, I totally understand. Like, I probably never went this long without seeing my mom. She's in Kentucky. Obviously, I'm in Georgia. Woo woo, mm. we turned it blue again. But I'm just, <laughs> it's been a year and some months now. And I'm like, woo, this is, and sometimes I have guilt about it. I'm like, oh, like, should I take the risk? But then I'm also like, I don't want to take the risk. So I totally understand about like not being around, especially with your baby. And it's like, oh, uh, I can only imagine. It's so much to weigh. It's so much to weigh. So it gets, it's, it's definitely tough sometimes because like you said, you want to just be like, I really want to see my family. Let's just do it. But then that is when, you know, we let our guards down and then that could happen. Right. And I don't like to speak it out, but you know what I mean? People can get exposed yes. and then. Then you got to have that on your conscience, right? Like, exactly. Was it my fault for for pressing mm -hmm. it? So yeah, mm -hmm. but it's it's been tough. It's been tough. Mm -hmm. But I've had also, I, I think, um, to have a baby now, especially, has given me something to like really focus my attention on. That I think helps in a way that if I didn't have him, mm -hmm. I probably would really be feeling it a lot more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness. Tell me about it. Oh my goodness. Um. So I want to kind of go back to the beginning and then kind of move into the wedding and the marriage and then the baby and then also talk about mental health as well. Um, but of course, you do this all the time. So I was like, I want her to be able to like let loose, let her hair down a little bit. Let's still give <laughs> us some little expertise because you are a doctor. So I'm like, I'm going to take advantage of that. And then we'll wrap <laughs> it up with some fun. Okay. Um, but I found this quote on your page where you talk about like not getting caught up in the titles and relationship status and all that stuff, which I love. And you posed this poignant question and you said, who are you without the relationship? Um, and I feel like for me, that was so important for me to like get to know myself and to learn how to love myself mm. before I met my husband, which was new for me for old Shonda. But how <laughs> would you describe yourself before you got married? And like, do you feel like you knew and were confident in who you were before you mm. met your husband? Whew. All right, you are gonna put me to work in this Oops, conversation sorry. no no in terms deep. of just just thinking no that's what i mean not yeah you put in me to work to think um all right before getting married i would say like i definitely was the kind of person and still am like this i um career and like that set of like goals were very clear to me um so in that regard, like I knew exactly who I was, like I was going to be a doctor. I knew that since I was like a, a, a kid, not even a teen, I was gonna say a teen, but like when I was a kid, that was the first mm -hmm. thing I said. So in some ways, that's who I thought my identity was. Mm -hmm. And it's still in some sense is, especially now since people kind of know me as Dr. Jess, I can't really mm -hmm. hide it. Um, yeah. 
but I put it out there myself. So before that was a part of like who I identified as, but I, I would say, I think like a lot of people um, in terms of like dating and trying to figure out like that part of me, I think I was like most people just trying to figure it out. Um, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to really have a very solid upbringing. So I saw my parents in their marriage that, you know, they end up divorcing. Um, but they kind of set some standards for me to sort of think about and how to carry myself and sort of like what's important. But I think like most people, I was trying to figure it out in terms of who I was. And so I would explore like travel and music and just be open to things. Um, because I, I think one of the things that still is pretty true about me is I, I do appreciate the sort of serendipity part of life. Like I like to be open to possibility. Um, and so I would try to make decisions that kind of led to that while knowing in the back of my mind, I'm going to be a doctor. And that's kind of the focus. But in terms of everything else, it was kind of like, I want to be open to what life brings, but then also kind of put out being a good person in the process is kind of a, a way to think about it too. I wish I had a better answer than that. That is no, like, I don't know. I got to think about that. <laughs> no, that, that is an honest, raw answer because I'm sure there are a lot of females out there who, especially if they're single right now, they feel like that. Cause sometimes I think there's pressure to feel like you have to be like, you have to know everything before you, you know, get married and you got to have it all figured out. And you're like, no, I was still trying to like figure it out. But like, but I think what was most important, what you said about being open to it, though, mm -hmm. you were open to you still knew your path, but you were open to what was what could happen. So open to the yeah. possibility. So I think that is like really critical and so important. Yeah, yeah. I think mm -hmm. that's something that has been with me my whole life, for sure. And even it was something that um, I remember when I first moved to New York for med school, my father was like, just be careful because you are, you know, you're pretty like open in a way that you might, you know, you're accepting of different people, lives, lifestyles, all this stuff. So he was just pointing out to be thoughtful about that because mm -hmm. that openness, especially with his baby girl going to New York from Alabama, yeah. he's like, I don't want you to get in any trouble. But I think that's something he even knew that there was this part about me that I liked the adventure of, mm -hmm. you know, being open. And when I say that, it doesn't mean like I was out here dabbling in all kinds of crazy stuff. That's not what I mean, right. but just sort of like, being open to learn and explore and to engage with different people and just kind of welcome even being new in an environment like moving to New York and not having any, you know, friends, but just mm -hmm. this openness around, I want to be here, I'm going to enjoy it, I'm going to embrace mm -hmm. the experience and let my life sort of develop out of there. And whomever comes into my circle from that is mm -hmm. going to be for me more in line with who I'm becoming. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, but my dad did try to warn me about that. And I'm glad he did because he probably, yeah. he saw it. He was like, oh, you're a baby girl. You're a little, you're open like yeah. me. So you got to be careful. You know, you can't accept was, everything. It was kind of like a free spirit, but with guardrails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because like you weren't like in alley. La La Land, but right. you still were like open to stuff. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. The guardrails um, for sure. <laughs> speaking of like, that process and especially being single one of my all-time favorite songs is by e badu bag lady like mm. hands down one of my favorite songs and i noticed you had quoted it on one of your um posts and you referred to baggage um as something that can show up as emotional psychological or even physical stuff that weighs you down and i was like yep that's what i was carrying mm -hmm. um <laughs> would you say that you had baggage when you first entered into the relationship and like how were you able to unpack all of that? Yeah, I mean, I think it like most people, the longer we live, the more that we accumulate um, this like baggage. So mm -hmm. I would think so, you know, some of it would be around like insecurities at time of like, you know, am I good enough? Am I, mm -hmm. you know, um, not insecure about the relationship, but insecurities about myself, like, you know, yes. and so I guess I'm emphasizing that because there is a difference. If you have insecurities in your relationship, it might be red flags, right? But I'm referring <laughs> to the pressure, right? Like, um, 
I like went natural and that was a whole thing to kind of re get reacquainted with like, what is it like to have this Afro? Um, yes. <laughs> you know, like most people, especially like, you know, most women, I think we all struggle with like body image from, from time to time. So, so I think I came into it with that. And then one of the things that I kind of think about a lot, um, especially early on, once I like knew my husband was like, okay, I'm really in love with this man. Yeah. I think we're gonna, you know, go the whole way. Um, sometimes there was like this, maybe this isn't baggage as much as it's um, feeling like not guilt, but almost like if, if I thought in the past, maybe I had experienced love and then I, I realized having this type of love that that wasn't it. And so, mm. <laughs> so I, I think that was also some baggage and learning how to, oh no, this is what like a healthy relationship is supposed to look and feel like. And so I think I don't know what kind of category that would fit in in terms of the baggage, but that is something I had to undo and mm. learn. Like the pace and stuff in the relationship feels different in a healthy relationship than one where you probably know it ain't right, you know, but you push through it anyways because you want the relationship. So I definitely came in with that. Um, and then, you know, stuff like, again, my parents didn't, their marriage didn't last. They're still, you know, they co-parented. I know that's the term they use now people use now but um and they still to this day refer to each other as like mom and dad in conversation Aww. with us so I think un also naturally you have to learn about what is it that you're afraid of with what failed in that marriage so I think sometimes I come into it um like my husband he's probably gonna kill me but one of the things that he would say like if I would get upset and think like okay we're breaking up he mm -hmm. will point out like, no, this is an argument. This isn't what what's happening. I'm in my mind. I'm like, okay, it's done. I know this is it. Yeah. I've said too much. Or so. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of the stuff that I think I came into it with. Um, for sure. Yeah. That's real. Somebody said, woo. And they said, it's, that's a word. Amen. <laughs> and Roxy, she said dropping gems. I think Roxy is tuning in all the way from Hawaii. Hey, Roxy. Oh, my. <sighs> That's yeah, where I wish I was. Listen, they were excited about tonight. I was like, I'm excited. But <laughs> ooh, when you talk about what you think love looks like, but then when you actually experience it, and then you're like, oh, I have, I was bamboozled. <laughs> like, <laughs> that is, that was nothing. That wasn't love at all. <laughs> at all. And, and I think I felt a lot of shame about it. Like, I felt like I could, I wish I could come up with a new word to describe because I felt like, why, how could I even think this or say it before? If that makes sense. It felt like I mm -hmm. felt some shame around it. Not really, but yeah, it probably was some, a part of me that was like, wow, I can't believe I used that. And that this wasn't, in, that wasn't it. It was, it wasn't, wasn't it. it. Mm -mm. <laughs> I my spirit. Listen, oh, Lord. <laughs> Don't get me started. I, oh, Lord. I, it wasn't it, basically. It was it not it. it. Mm -mm. Uh, <laughs> for me, I'm like, that's part of that's part of the best thing about love. It's like, once you experience true love, you're like, I don't know what I thought that was. But like you said, that wasn't it. Mm -hmm. That was not it. No, Woo! at all. Mm. Uh, so speaking of <laughs> your marriage, listen, you all got married basically in the midst of a hurricane. Mm -hmm. um and I know it all worked <laughs> out and now you can look back and like yeah we made it through but I just want to know sincerely like initially though how were you feeling about <laughs> having to just pivot you know like you had to pivot before quarantine came like how did that oh feel gosh. initially <laughs> it was it was by far the most um stress well, I can't say the most stressful with what we're living in, but it, at that point, yeah. it was the most stressful time. thing I had experienced in my, like, adult life. Because um, I was like most people, you know, you plan for a year, like, we had got engaged the year before, and then this was, like, a little point my mom made <laughs> when I was like, we don't know the date. She was like, well, let me tell you something. When a man proposes, you don't make him wait. So mm -hmm. she told <laughs> me that because I, had, I was like, okay. You know, some down. people... Some people will say, oh, you know, we got engaged. Um, we're going to maybe do it in a couple of years. But she pointed out, like, it is customary to, customary to have it in a year. But she gave me that gem, like, you don't make them wait. And I said, mm -hmm. okay. okay. Mind you, that wasn't my intent. But I think I also was thinking along the lines of, like, career, plan, all this stuff. And she's just like, that's not how that works. Um, 
So that's just something I want to share. Um, but yeah, I like I planned um, for the year and had everything, you know, down to the T, like the, 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 the table setting, like the flower, the timing, um, every detail. And then the week of our wedding, so we did it in New Orleans where my husband is from. Mm -hmm. We, the weather was weird and like, you know, I think that was the year in 2017, there were hurricanes happening, like in Puerto Rico, they had that huge hurricane. Yeah. So it, everyone was like on high alert. And the day before um, our wedding, they essentially planned to shut the city down the following day at like 6 p.m. to prepare for the hurricane. So all of our guests were from out of town. Um, and when we found out this news, I like, was upset, like sad. But one of the things that we really emphasized about our wedding was we wanted it to be family oriented and like people, the, my, my cousin did my makeup. One of my best friends at the time did my hair. You know, we were all staying in a house. So in some ways that was, that was God because once things blew up, I had my real people there with me. Mm -hmm. So they were like, we're in this, you know? So um, and my like cousins were like the wedding um, photographer. And then we had another amazing friend who was like the other photographer. And uh, my cousins were the videographer. So I'm saying all this to say I had a lot of support. So when I was about mm -hmm. to really have my like meltdown, <laughs> my mom was like, you know what? Okay, take a moment. Everybody was like, you just. And so we ended up getting dressed the day before the wedding and doing all of our wedding photos. Um, and then the next day, to my surprise, like our very important guests were still there and I couldn't believe that they had actually came. They were there. Um, and then the curfew, they still had a curfew at 6 PM, but we had the best time. Our venue, went like all night. <laughs> we went all night. Yeah. And then we like basically went back to our, the Airbnb that we had and just stayed there till like four in the morning. But, um, I'm just glad we went into it with like the in, the intent was like family because I know sometimes you'll want to outsource everything like get the mm -hmm. you know this person to do your hair and that person to do the makeup and then my thought was they could have they could really all cancel on you at that yeah. point mm -hmm. you know but my family was there with me like girl we are doing this and it was a, it was the best time I had mm -hmm. it was magical we had so many people make babies that day too so there were a lot of like yes. babies nine months later. <laughs> Yeah, somebody in the comments, uh, must be one of your friends and family, Kelly Fierce, she said, we oh, was there, yeah. rain or hurricane. And yeah. Angela said, the village is crucial. And they said, it's nothing like a healthy support system. Amen to that. Yes, mm. that's my girl, Ashley. Hey, Hi, Ashley. She's, um, she is amazing, too. And that, yep, her beautiful face and her now husband, um, they were there just like, everybody was acting like it was not a hurricane coming. That's for that's, sure. That's and it didn't thing. come. It didn't even come. Look, See? Look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and would you say that because I know like you were kind of alluding to a lot of times we focus so much on the wedding and the details but would you say that kind of helped you already had a foundation but did it j just kind of help you all focus even that much more on the love between you all and the actual marriage versus just the wedding that just lasts for a day versus mm -hmm. the marriage that lasts a lifetime like did it help kind of you all focus in more so on the love Yes, absolutely. I think, um, again, like once the shoe dropped, essentially, and that's sort of like my my own, I mean, I've worked through it a bit in therapy, but I always have this feeling of like the shoe's gonna drop. Um, so I was like, what the shoe's dropping? Um, I think once we me and my husband came together, and we just like, focused on this is we're already we felt like we were already married, you know, anyways, so it just brought us together to focus on let's just pulled together, you know, our village is here, let's make the most of it. We still didn't believe the worst was going to happen, but we just knew our goal was to just focus on the love and each other. Um, and that's, that's what really came through. I mean, we, we got dressed in our, like, it's bad luck, supposedly, right, to get yeah. dressed in your, like, wedding outfit. So we were, like, in our, you know, I was in my gown, and he's in his tux, and we just did it. Um, yes. Yeah. And I'm so was, glad you... You were honest about like um, waiting for the shoe to drop. I'm always because I'm always trying to find that quote. Like I'm like, what is that quote? I'm like, that's it. Because that's exactly how I felt when I first got married. It's like sometimes, and even later on, it's like sometimes when something is so good, you just feel like you're waiting. You're like, I, I I'm just waiting. And I'm like, and I had to go through therapy and work through that too because it's like, and one of my friends just had. She's like, why are you always just thinking? And I'm like. 
I know now where it stems from my, my background childhood and stuff, but mm -hmm. I was the same way. So I'm so glad you admitted that. I'm like, I, I feel you on that, sis, like a whole lot. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> to work it's it. something. It's, you got, it's like you want to hold your breath. But to your point, for <laughs> me, it also came from things from my childhood, like mm -hmm. experiencing loss very early in a way that was shocking. So it does feel like when things are good, like something is about to happen. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't categorize that day as the shoe dropping because right. every, like I said, everyone came around and we had a good, I mean, that was probably one of the best days of my life. It was so much fun. <laughs> it was, it was so much fun. It was like pure. It was just so pure because everybody who was there, they were about it. Like I had a friend yeah. say, well, yes. if I got to work at a po' boy shop, I'm down here. I had an, another friend, like, their hotel didn't even have, like, a room service. They were like, we didn't even really know how we were going to eat. We didn't care. We didn't even know how we were going to get home. We were just like, we're out here. So <laughs> That is a village. Listen, like yeah. you said, they was about it, about it. They were like, we are out here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that just tickled me. So, oh, uh, you about it? Is you bad at that? All right. They really were books. ready. <laughs> listen, that was my high school day. So listen, I had, my girlfriend had like all the No Limit albums. So I could go. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, so during COVID, obviously you were pregnant and you had a baby, which <laughs> is amazing. Like shout out to all the parents and especially those of you all who had to give birth because I can't even begin to imagine. Um. And I remember you had wrote that, you know, because of like all the restrictions that imposed on your plans and everything, your husband told you, you can and will have those things. It will just look different than what we planned. And I'm like, oh, that's applicable to almost everything in life. Like even when you get married, because who would have known that you was going to get married in the middle of the hurricane? <laughs> who would have known my first year of marriage was going like, it was a mess. But thank God 12 years later, we're still together. Yeah. But, um... I think it also speaks to something that you talk a lot about in terms of letting go and accepting, which mm -hmm. is like, ding, 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 like uh, confirmation for what I had to like really hone in on last year for mm -hmm. 2020. So talk mm -hmm. to us about letting go and accepting and what that looks like for you and like how you've embraced this in your own life or your marriage, or even as a mom, like what does that look like for you? It's, I think it's a lot of, um, self-compassion for sure and so yeah. I I like I always I feel like I'm putting my best foot forward um in all that I can do I also recognize that I'm human and ain't nothing I'm gonna do is ever going to be perfect um and I've had you know in this many years of life I have a good sense of like what my my faults are not the stuff that I can't really see but like this is gonna seem silly but like I know I do not pay attention to details. So if I send an email, it's always going to be something messed up in it. Like, I know that. I know if I send a text and my, my girlfriends know the sentences are going to be just a mess and they just, they know how to read it. Or they might yep. say, read this sentence. And I'm like, I didn't even write anything. So like, I know this about myself. Um, so like, I know what those faults are. And I just, I just embrace it a, a little bit. And I give myself that sort of self-compassion that I'm trying and, um, to not be so hard on myself about things. And I also practice like grace in terms of just, again, like giving myself the space to make mistakes, to be human, to show up again tomorrow and try it again. Um, it's something I was forced to learn. It's, it, it happened um, really during medical school. And again, like perfection is a part of like how you get to a certain place or that, that, that feeling or, or need to be perfect because none of us are perfect but that sort of constant mm. constant like work towards it so when I wasn't able to really achieve that in medical school um was kind of like you know not the best in the class for example I had to relearn that about myself like okay but I'm still going to be able to do this work but I can't be perfect and that sort of fall from grace so to speak is like when I had to learn to figure out who I am without that and then what can I do to still show up every day? Because I'm going, I'm determined to do X, Y, Z, which, you know, that example, I'm talking about medicine, but in my daily life, I'm determined to be a good wife and a, you know, a good mother now and continue my like overall sort of philosophy around like just showing up and trying to be a good person um, is mm -hmm. really a part of like how I try to frame my, my life and how I yeah. engage with people. 
That's good. Somebody said self-compassion. Love that. And Renita, hey, Renita, she said, woo, I needed mm -hmm. to hear that. And I, I know, like, I, that's why we do this. Because we just sometimes just need to be reminded of that. Having that self-compassion, like, sometimes I feel like it's easier to have compassion for other people than it is for our own selves. And so for you to, like, really highlight that and to talk about that, you know, on your page and, and tonight, it's like, I just think it's so important. Especially because you're a new mom. So I can only imagine the pressure that comes with being a new mom and trying to be the perfect mom and everybody wants to mom shame. It's like, <laughs> it wears me out and I'm not even a mom. I'm like, y'all are wearing me out with this. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. But it's a journey. I think it's a journey to get to a place where you have to, to accept a lot of it. Because I think when I didn't, that's when all the anxiety was coming up. Because I was striving like, okay, let me just try it again. Let me keep doing it this way. And then sometimes when people are not impressed with your best, that's when I'm like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. that's my best. I'm giving them, a, and something's wrong with them. So, or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or something's wrong with the environment. So I'm showing up knowing what I'm given and that's what I'm going to do. You know, that's yeah. sort of like how I, that's sort of how I got to a place. And I felt like my anxiety level went down because I'm just like, I have tomorrow until I don't anymore. <laughs> you know? Listen. <laughs> That's me. Somebody said, Erin, the comic. Hey, Erin. She said, Dr. Jess has helped me so much in that area with her post, et cetera. We need to give ourselves grace and space. And we do. Even you had another quote that said, accepting. A lot of people try to cope by figuring out, figuring it all out instead of just accepting it. And I was like, ding, ding, ding. That was me, Shonda. Because <laughs> like, the anxiety, I mean, it could rev up. And finally, I went to therapy and you know, now I'm learning how to manage it much better. And I'm like, thank God I started therapy before last year mm. because mm. I just was like, oh no, I'm, I'm, I can't worry about this. Cause I can only control what I can control. So if that means I have to wake up every morning and put on some lipstick and do my hair and get dressed and wash, then I'm going to focus on that and do the best I can. And like you said, show up again the next day. But what yeah. Aaron said, like, Dr. Jess, you are helping us. <laughs> Thank Most you. Definitely. No, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, a lot of us carry the weight of, or we define ourselves based on the pain from our past relationships. And one mm. of my favorite quotes, and not just past relationships, but experiences, childhood, everything. And one of my favorite quotes from you um, that I love, you said, you are not your pain. You are love. I'm like, oh, thank you. I needed that when I was like 20. But <laughs> I... I think that it can help initiate healing for someone, which I feel like that we, you've already initiated some healing with mm -hmm. um, the other gems you've said tonight. But will you expand on that? Like, was that a powerful affirmation that was conceived from like your own journey and your own experiences? Because it just, it really touched me when I read that. Yes, it was. I'm glad that you're sharing that it did, but because that that's where it came from. Sometimes when I say it now, and this is what happens, I think, when you do get further along any of us like once you kind of move to the next you know phase it's like it's harder to feel the same connection with certain parts but yes that came from feeling like I got off track of who who I was um and a lot of that came a lot of that trauma really came from when I learned my identity was not doctor 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 right because that's what happened my whole life um and then once that part of me was really like once I was confronted with like you are going to have to figure out what else is makes you who you are because if that doesn't work out or you don't want to be a doctor anymore like who are you um mm. and so that that was a piece of it but then I no, and I was, actually I also started to struggle a lot with um feeling for the first time like othered because of race so mm. And I mean, I've always been woke. Like, I always know I'm Black. I don't mean it like right. that. What I mean is I grew up where my Blackness was essentially the norm. Um, you know, there were white people where I grew up, but they were listening to Soldier Slim. They were listening to, you know, No Limit. They were listening to Cash Money with us. Like, it was not, right. they were, my reality was their reality. So mm. the first time I was confronted with what it meant to be Black in a majority white space, was when I went to medical school. So that's like my the, my late 20s. Um, yes. And then that like really started to 
to bring up inside me a lot of like anger. Um, and it, I got so angry about it that I started to be like, I don't even think I could deal with white people anymore. Like, this is crazy. Ooh. So I went to therapy with a white male therapist um, because it was really, it wasn't like who I was. I knew that like, I, I, I don't have it in me to hate or to feel like so against a group, but I felt like I was, I was getting like isolated. Like it was only five of us in my med school, um, five black folks. They were asking me things like, what's the origin of your last name? And it wasn't because they were being, it was just, they just didn't ha they didn't experience black people in right. a way that my girlfriends growing up did. Mm -hmm. So that I think really brought up in me just a lot of anger and pain that I had never really experienced. Um, and then on top of that, the identity piece, I was in that crisis. Um, but through therapy and really rediscovering myself, working through some, some challenges that I was, that was kind of like the perfectionism and working through like what it means to be assertive and that's okay. And mm -hmm. getting validated around some of that. I realized that I returned to a place where I was confident again. I felt like myself, I, you know, I wasn't ashamed of who I am. And I realized that that was really who I am. I'm not the thing. I'm not that pain. I'm not what tried to change me. And love to me is just like this pure essence mm. of who we all are. So just love, you are love to me is also the reminder that like, I can emanate that out to people. And why not like, you know, shine that back on myself. Mm. So it kind of just came out in that way, but it was through pain and trauma and then working through it, kind of oh. rediscovering myself. I love that. Um, somebody said, OMG, you're helping me. Yes, Renita. And somebody else just said, yes. Like, oh, <laughs> that's my I, girl, that's Kiana. Kiana. Because I felt there's just something so, cause especially us as women, especially black women, like, like everything you were just saying about that isolation, that was my whole college experience. Like, I felt you on that because I'm like, and I, the way I grew up, it was like, we all, it's not like it was like kumbaya, but like you said, yeah. why can't we just, we just got each other. You know, yeah. but then I get to business school and I'm like, dang, I'm the only black person in there. Like, where is everybody? Like, and then you do, you start to feel angry and all that stuff. And you, you kind of carry that. But like you said, if I can emanate that love and then I can get it back, like, mm, that was deep. I love that. <laughs> Somebody said, thank you for sharing this. Telling our story is so important. Helping to change the narrative. And this is mm -hmm. why we do this. Because our stories matter. And where else can, like, being in a safe space with other Black women, especially, it's like, I love love, but I love me some Black love. But, yeah. like, being in Black, yeah. part of it, Black love is just being with other Black women as well and, like, sharing our experiences and bonding over that. So thank you, mm -hmm. Get Art Inspired, for, um, for saying that. Um, speaking of, like, just the journey in mental health, um, You've talked about why it's not always best to rely on your friends as your therapist. And I have read and I assume <laughs> the same is true for spouses because mm. my husband tried to put that on me last year. He was like, babe, you're my therapist. I said, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> no, 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 sir. I'm not. But will you just elaborate and explain why that is so important, why we shouldn't rely on our friends or our spouses to be our so-called therapists? Well, I think in short, you want those relationships to last right you know you want <laughs> therapy is supposed to get messy therapy is supposed to also end so mm -hmm. I think that's a new answer I'm gonna start probably using from here on out because that's really the crux of it um when you are processing things with your with a person like your your spouse or you know friends or family how much are they supposed to do with that, right? And some of it might be about them and what, what are they supposed to do yeah, with that, yes. right? So I think the main thing is that if we are doing that to our friendship, it can damage it. And I'm, I'm guilty. I have definitely um, lost friends when I was in a place where I didn't realize that I was, was using those relationships more like therapy. Let me call mm -hmm. you up and vent. Let me call you up and say what I got to say. Then I got to go. Um, so I, I always will appreciate and love those friends who I've lost <laughs> because of not knowing better, because I really appreciate what they did offer me during that time and even the sacrifice on some level that they gave. But that's what happens. It destroys. It can have the potential to destroy those important friendships and relationships. So, yeah, if you want to keep those keep those relationships going, you just cannot pour that kind of stuff into people all the time. 
because it will, it just, they can't, they can't take it on. My job when I'm in a therapist role is to contain, is to help someone process and containing a lot of it is letting that person just get it all out. And I'm, I'm containing and I'm sitting here and really holding space for it, but you can't do that with people you love because mm-hmm. then where, where do they put it? You know? Exactly. <laughs> And I'm not a therapist. I got my own therapy exactly. to work through. And that's, I mean, yeah. And that's like the other piece, right? Like you don't want to expect someone to give advice or to to know how to help a person work through things if that's not their background either. Because mm-hmm. I got some friends who'll say, okay, we're going to ride on them. If it's something like, okay, well, let's get them. Like, what do you mean? Like, you yes. know, if it's like back in the day, a sort of conversation about what's going on with like, you know, a guy, they might give you bad advice, or even in your in your marriage, you could get someone give you some bad advice. So that, you don't want. Amen that. to that. Somebody <laughs> asked Dr. Jess, "Do you offer services to clients in other states?" Um, not at the moment, not because I don't want to, but um, it's a legal. it's a legal. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. your your psychiatrist or therapist, um, they are licensed to treat people in, in certain states. So um, legally, I would need to be licensed in the state that um, I'm seeing a person in. So I might expand, but I'm still one person and I'm a new mom and I'm a wife and I'm trying to just. Yes. yes. Set Her clientele is booked. Okay. She's booked. <laughs> but listen, y'all done got some gems tonight. So, you know, you can use this as a launching pad to find someone in your local area. Um, and I like what you said yes. about therapy should end I have never heard anybody say that before which obviously you're the expert but you said therapy should end that's Mm -hmm. very interesting Hmm. yep yeah so if you are getting like if you are in individual therapy um, as opposed to like group I'm just giving that so people know some length like terms but if you are in an individual therapy and you are doing like a, a typical talk therapy where you come in and you may just talk about whatever's on your mind. Your therapist may not say a lot. They may give you more of that hour to talk. Um, That type of therapy, typically a person who's in it will get to a point where they may either start to tell their therapist that they are ready to end, or in some cases, the therapist might start to indicate that their their work is coming to an end. But yeah, therapy is not really intended to be forever some people do stay in it for years and years and that's okay um but it's intended to end yeah yeah because a a part of it too is like you're building this relationship with someone so that you can sometimes reenact some of the issues that you do out in the world right um you misinterpret something your therapist says and then you confront your therapist about it and then your therapist helps you to see that's what you do with you know your husband every time you get upset mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. once you kind of work through that you go through stages and so from what i from what i know is you'll get to a point where you feel like you've done the work yes. and you might have to break the news to your therapist like i think i'm ready and your therapist will probably be like yep you are <laughs> mm-hmm. So it shouldn't last forever. And then if you're taking like CBT, which is more like a skills therapy, not CBD, not like the, you know, not CBD oil, but CBT, like Tom, (laughs) it's cognitive behavioral therapy. That's like very structured. So it might be exactly 12 weeks, but that's usually you're following a, a, a workbook and there's a, there's a structure to it. But most people I think are going to end up in like a talk therapy. Okay. The last piece I'll say is if it's more supportive, like you're coming in, you're doing a lot of more venting and they're kind of supporting you through a stressful time. That's often even shorter because usually once that stressful experience ends, the person is like, you're done with it. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, It makes you're you're right up my street. Okay. <laughs> okay. When you said you've done the work, I that's, that's kind of how you feel. I went to therapy for probably a year and a half and I was like, I did do a group therapy just to kind of get some additional tools. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, I think I'm, I, it's the beginning of the year. So I'm kind of like, oh, I do want to talk to somebody. So I am looking into talking to, to someone next month just to kind of like touch base. It's like a maintenance type of thing. Yep. And that's but, perfect. Yep. Yes. But when you said that therapy should end, I'm like, okay, that's a good sign. Thank you, Dr. Jess. That's it. You're ready. If you feel it. And, that, and, and like I said, often your therapist won't, tell you because it's 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 your pace 
but you mm -hmm. might see a little glisten in their eye. If they're like me, I can't hide some stuff. I'm like, ooh. And I just learned yeah. to use that in my sessions. Like, mm. yeah, you okay. might see a little twinkle in their eye. Like, yeah, yeah. that's oh, good to know. Okay. <laughs> um, my last question before we do the rapid fire round. Um, okay. As a psychiatrist, as a psychiatrist, um, what are a few things that you would like for us, especially us as black people and even specifically want to specify black women? Um, but what is it? What are a few things you want us to commit to trying or doing more of this year? as it relates to our mental health and wellness? I want to see more of us get involved in meditation and yoga. I think those are accessible to everyone and it gives you an opportunity to learn how to sit still and just be. Mm -hmm. And it's in those moments when you get through it that you realize how much you can actually get through in, in your day. So when you're able to sit still and you experience your thoughts and you're not trying to pay attention to it you're just letting them happen and then at the end of that I don't know five minutes and you keep building 10 30 minutes you realize there was a lot of stuff going through my mind but I got through it in these 30 minutes so during the day I can sort of carry that same awareness about my thoughts but not get attached to it not feel like I got to do this I got to do that oh I'm thinking about that I got to try that when you learn how to just sit still with it you learn how to figure out what's important to actually yeah. go and do. And then you can execute that. So I want to see more of us actually do that. Obviously therapy, I always talk about, but yoga is going to help you to learn, particularly the meditative part of yoga, um, mm -hmm. because that's going to, I think, unlock a lot of that stillness that we don't really do. Like we're, we're constantly on our phones. When we get anxious, we pick up our phone. When we're bored, we pick up our phone. When we're angry, we pick up our phone. You know, it's you're never alone with yourself. So then when you experience something that feels overwhelming, you you're in trouble. Do. Yeah, mm -hmm. you do not know what to do. Um, but if you sit with it, those feelings do dissipate. They sort of the feelings of like, I got to do something that that slowly mm -hmm. goes away for most people. Uh, so I want to see yeah. us do that. Hey, man, listen, that 2020, that was me. It was like, it's like I got the tools I needed. But 2020 was like, let me test Shonda and see if she's going <laughs> to really like put this to use. And you talk about like mindfulness, which a lot of people talk about mindfulness stuff. But like you had mentioned like some examples of like taking a shower. And I was like, yes, like when I take a shower, I like you talk about allowing your senses to feel. Uh, and I'm like, I, that's probably why I love showers so much, because I do. I will like just like stand there and just like take it all <laughs> in, like even the when I exfoliate, like I I can feel like every little bead and stuff. It's like, oh, that's mindfulness, Shonda. And like looking out the window, looking at nature, I'm like, that's mindfulness. It's like sometimes mm -hmm. we overthink it, but I'm like, I am practicing it. And I think that really helped. And even you talked about the mindset and like, instead of thinking, oh, I have to be at home with my husband all day. It's like, I get to be home with my husband and spend mm -hmm. this quality time together. It's like yes. change mindset. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm like, yes, I love it. I mean, it's so, and it just, you know, and then I don't like to keep, I mean, it's probably my trauma, but just thinking about life and, you know, it can feel long for people. So I definitely don't want to alienate anyone who's going through like depression and can yes. feel like the days are long, but we know it's short, you know? So it's like, you got to really think about those gifts that are in your life and focus on that. Um, doesn't mean don't acknowledge the stuff that ain't right. But like, if we focus on that, I think it just makes us get through each day a little bit better, mm, you know, mm, for sure. Yeah. Like it's, it's like, we're lucky to be um, trapped at home with these uh, husbands of ours. Listen, <laughs> Cause I could be at home with like, I don't know. With nobody. Back in the day with nobody, like a bunch of like, I don't even want to talk about dating. That's that's tough. Oof. I'm glad I'm not out there. And the fact that we're <laughs> we're two married women, we made it through quarantine. It's a lot of couples that didn't make it through quarantine. I like, know. Well, I mean, though we're still in quarantine, but they didn't make it through 2020. Like we made it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so we got about nine minutes left. Ad Lab lets us go a little longer. Thank the Lord, so they don't cut you off right at hour. But we have okay. enough time. So I want to do a rapid fire round. And for those of y'all who are new to Wise Wind Down, it's just a fun little round that we do to get to know our special guests a little bit more. 
And it's also an opportunity for you all to chime in and y'all be hitting it up in the chat and going crazy. So feel free to respond with your responses as well. So Dr. Jess, are you ready? I hope, yes, I'm ready. <laughs> you are. <laughs> okay, okay. I kept it pretty light. Okay. Um, which is harder, getting married during a hurricane or giving birth during a pandemic? Um, getting married during a hurricane. Oh, wow, really? Yes. <laughs> it's so many more people to manage personalities, oh, feeling like is true. everything going to be right? Are people going to talk junk about my, you know, wedding when they leave? But having the baby... I mean, it, it's been harder to raise him, I think, you know, without yeah. having the support. But I really got to lock in with my husband. It was like, what are we doing? Okay, we're doing this at home. Yes. All right. So it was a lot more of just like, it felt really like I knew what I was getting myself into. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I tell people that all the time. When you have like a, even if you have a big wedding or whatever, it, what stresses you is everyone else. Like, that's the stress. But that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um your for those of y'all who don't know you can research this later on in your own time but juke joint anniversary celebration oh new orleans vibes or brooklyn vibes oh my goodness oh mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is hard oh mm -hmm. my gosh um that first one was on fire new orleans i we walked outside because we make everyone dress up in like 1920s we oh, walked yes. outside. I forgot that it wasn't the 20s. I walked out. I was like, what are these people doing in spaghetti strap shirts and like tank tops? It was, that was by far sweat dripping everywhere. It was so, yes. that was so much fun. Brooklyn, we brought it though. We had a lot of jazz artists. Um, that one was amazing. We did it at like a, a bed and breakfast in, in bed style. It was amazing, but New Orleans for sure. Uh, yeah, it looks like New Orleans is in the league, but yeah. <laughs> Listen, I was just looking at the pictures. I'm like, oh, that looks fantastic. Oh, uh, that was that we, we couldn't have it this year. So that's our like wedding. That was always going to be our like anniversary. Mm -hmm. That was like our anniversary party. Ugh. This pandemic. Well, listen, I'll be there in spirit the next time. Yeah. Well, I'll make sure um, to send you it when we can do this again. I have yes. to come you and your husband. Um, PDA, all for it or no? Depends. What what do you call what do you call PDA? Um, you know, like touching, kissing, holding hands. Yes, I'm PDA. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I don't know what you thought I was. I'm not get a about. room PDA. I'm not like that. I'm not like. <laughs> yeah, that kind of level. <laughs> I'm not like. Oh my god, what are they doing? Um, but I do. I like to touch. I do like to touch yes. and kiss and hug, but. You won't have to yell for me to get a room. I'm not like that level of PDA. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, okay. This one is sometimes hard for people. Which TV wife most describes you? Claire Huxtable, the original Vivian from The Fresh Prince, Rochelle from Everybody Hates Chris, or mm. Rainbow from Blackish? Oh my gosh. I would have to say I'm Claire Huxtable. Okay. I think I am. Right. Um,. Yeah, I can see myself really growing into her when I get a little bit mature, you know. But yeah, yeah I think I, I think I, I think I identify with Claire Huxtable. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see that. Who's more the morning morning person, you or him? Oh, me. Mm -hmm. He's a night owl. He can stay up all night. I have to be like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, you are you a night owl? Yeah. I'm like not. I'm like nine o'clock. Well, not really nine, but like ten. I'm like. Yeah, can't even keep my eyes open. You and my <laughs> husband, he's like, "What is wrong with you?" I'm like, "I'm, I'm just awake." <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said, "Oh, Brandy, she must really know you well." She said, "I said Claire before you even said the choices." <laughs> oh, I'll take it. I just, mm -hmm. I like she had the like a little read, but yeah, I want to get into her wardrobe and just like yes. the 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 body curl. What is it? Body wave here. Body wave. Uh huh. Yeah, uh -huh. I need to. I need to get into that vibe. <laughs> um, who's more likely to initiate cuddling, you or him? Oh me. Yeah. The <laughs> funny thing is, my baby does it a little bit too, so he's got that for me. Oh. Like wherever we are, his his foot is gonna find a way onto one of us. Like he's gonna put, and that's me. I'm gonna put that toe. I mean, that's not cuddling, but I like. I have to. Touch. Oh yeah. 
the little touch. That's oh. neat. And I love his name. <laughs> Brilliant. Like, oh my gosh. Thank you. This is so cute. <laughs> this is always a controversial question. Um, toilet paper over or under? Oh right my God. Now. I don't even know. Oh, you probably one of those unders then. <laughs> is that what that means? I have no idea. I've never even noticed. I would say hold a moment and let me go look, but like, <laughs> if you if you haven't noticed, that means you don't care. A lot of some people will say it doesn't matter to them. Um, okay, but so if you don't know, if you haven't noticed, then it you don't really care. I'll get back to you. I'm gonna be under your picture. Like I'm definitely over. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I see a few overs in the comment. Yes, are, oh, so see, this is a mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everyone's oh, over. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, there's okay. an under. Oh, there they go. <laughs> under. All right. I love all of y'all anyway. I think I would like it over, though, because it's like the you roll like this. Thank you. You don't roll like this. Thank you. So maybe I'm Thank over. You. Exactly. Thanks, Dr. Jess. <laughs> and she's an expert doctor. Thank you. <laughs> Which do you prefer, sunny tropical getaway or a cold cabin getaway? Oh, no. Sunny tropical. I need a beach right Me now. Too. Yes. That was my last vacation. I didn't know in January of last year. I didn't even know. <laughs> Me too. February. I was like, where is the same? I didn't know this was going to be it. This was it. That was it. Oh, help us. Um, who takes longer to get ready, you or him? I think, I would say my husband does. Yeah. Mm. You got a pretty yeah. boy on you. I do. He, he his his fashion is impeccable, so he's a little bit more. And then I just got into the habit. I'm like, I'm not low maintenance, but I have a I have a low fuss process, and that's probably yes. why it doesn't take so long because I just have the same thing I do, with a little bit of flair. Yep, the flair. Yes. That's it. <laughs> it. Okay, last one because you know you said your hubby's from New Orleans. I know he made you red beans and rice when you had your baby. Yes. So home cooked meal or takeout, and who's more likely to cook? Mm. Um, I definitely miss eating out for sure. Um, I think right now I want. I mean, we eat a lot of takeout. I want a restaurant meal. I want to sit in a restaurant and have someone ask yes. me what do I want for my appetizer and like what kind of wine do they want to start me off. With? I need that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to have to reheat it up. No. I, Mm -mm. I'm done with takeout. They like I'm done. But yes, um, we both cook. We both do. I mean, he does like the New Orleans like good, amazing food. I'm more of like I I'm I love Italian, so I have to cook mm -hmm. that. But we both sort of like we like pass off on it for sure. See, and you made it through. See, it yes, bad. okay, <laughs> yay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well before we wrap um i just want to say thank you so much like um you just have this spirit about you and like people feel it i people see it in the comments and i know people's gonna watch the replay like you just are helping so many people with what you're doing in terms of um you know especially releasing the shame associated with mental health and all that like i'm so here for all of that but I'm also just thankful that, you know, you were here tonight and you were just Jess. You were still Dr. Jess, but you were also just Jess. Um, and so I just appreciate you being so open and so transparent because I know people were touched and you were dropping so many major gems. And so before we wrap, I want you to share with people, you know, how they can find you. Um, again, she's booked up, guys. No more new clients. She has a baby and stuff. <laughs> but how they can find you, how they can support you. And then what do you want to toast to tonight? Oh, okay. Um, I guess I'll start with, so people obviously can find me on, I, I spend a lot more of my time on social media on Instagram, so always can reach out there. Um, I do want to connect with therapists. So I, on my website, askdrjess.com, people can, therapists can go there and give me their information. I do want to have people that I can send folks to, especially, yes. you know, where I'm looking. So mm -hmm. that's a great place to also connect. Um, yeah, and you can send an email or DM. I try to get to everyone. Um, and in terms of toast, so I brought out, I couldn't, I don't even want to say, we're like packing a little bit right now. So I didn't have a wine glass, but I do have my Prince okay. mug. Yeah. Shout out to Prince. 
<laughs> it's even better. <laughs> so I want to cheers to I want to cheers to um to love to healthy marriages and to you for doing such an amazing job in, in, in having these conversations and and encouraging people to to talk about it and come up you know come forward in a different light to, to, to really talk about what it means to be you know in love and married and so I again I really appreciate you for this conversation and this 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 series that you've started and it's season two right yeah so you you're the first for season two yeah cheers, cheers. Clean, 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 clean. eye contact <laughs> eye contact yeah <laughs> yes and Prince. I want to cheers to letting go and accepting mm. because I feel like it was definitely, like I told you earlier, it was confirmation for my own personal journey and just learning how to control what I can control. And so when I saw that as like a major theme for your page and stuff, I was like, yes, okay, God, I hear you. Like, you just got to let go and accept. And I cheers to that for everybody because it is 2021, but I know there's a lot of things that have carried over. And it's not, mm -hmm. a, I mean, we saw it today at the Capitol. Even though we had a great day for Georgia, then the Capitol, D.C., they just want to ruin everything. So there's still some things. It's, it's never ending, it feels like. But letting go and accepting and just trying to, you know, create that peace and that joy, however we can find it. So I toast to that. And that. toast to Black, to mental health and you yes. helping yes. us. Thank you, Dr. Jess. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On that note, thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, listen, and... I was looking, somebody said, oh, Jess is very personable. This is wonderful, ladies. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all for tuning in. Um, you can catch a replay right after this. Um, you know, you got to catch IGTV real quick because otherwise they'll delete it. Or they say they are Kevin, but I don't trust it because one day they lost it. But you can catch a replay. If you enjoyed tonight, share with a friend, tell a friend, share. Because, um, y'all, this is valuable information and it's just empowering and we need this. And so, um, like, again, if you're married, whether you're single or not, um, this is a safe space for you all. And so I won't be here next week because, again, the schedule is changing. So we're going to bow weekly. So you'll catch me every other week. But still the same wonderful experience, same wonderful special guest. Um, and so, yes, thank you all for tuning in. And I appreciate y'all. And I hope y'all have a blessed and wonderful week. Thank you, Dr. Jack. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>